Hi everyone, welcome to Push Your Luck video. My name is Eric and today we'll be looking at a 2015 release, uh, Elysium. Now this is, I think it's distributed by SMOD and uh, published by Space Cowboys. This is a game designed by Brad Gilbert and Matthew Dunstan. Now Brad Gilbert brought, uh, had other games as well and one of his uh, games I really like is Divinair which was released in 2013. Um, Matthew Dunstan uh, had two other games under his belt and that is uh, Relic Runners as well as Empire Engine. I played Empire Engine, I also played Relic Runners as well. So I'm look looking forward to Elysium uh, based on what these two designers have done. And uh, this is a 2 to 4 player game. It plays about 16 minutes and uh, it is um, a game where you're trying, it's a, kind of a set collection game. I mean at the end when you get points it's based on your set collecting. Uh, how much, how, what are the sets that you have collected. And uh, so let's take a look at the game components, how the game plays and my thoughts about the game. Before we go into the game uh, components and how the game plays, let's take a look at the insert. I, one of the things I, I mean, I must really show you this insert that came with the box. It is so functional. Everything has its own place, has, a, has its own right place that you can put. For example, the cuts, uh, you can put it here. You can probably sleeve them and put it into the slots and they'll fit fine. Uh, the other components you can put on all these areas. And if you take away this part, if you take away this part, for example, you can see all the all the other tokens that you need for this game can all be put inside and they'll fit nicely, they will not fall out uh, because the board, the insert itself will be flushed against the top of the uh, the box. So I, I must applaud, uh, applaud the publishers for coming out with this design for this insert because everything is functional, uh, very useful and they will not fly over a place when you carry the box around. Uh, most of the time when you have other games you can see that uh, the insert is not flush towards the bottom of the box. So uh, even if you put even if you put a board, uh, the game board on top of the game itself, often if you do not back back your components and uh, back your cards, they'll all be flying around when you transfer them uh, between your home and your game playing area. So uh, kudos to to them for making such an amazing insert. So these are the game components for the board game Elysium. Uh, the quality of the components is top notch. The cardboard are very nice, uh, sturdy cardboards. The cards are also uh, nicely done. They might be a bit thin, but you can always sleeve them if you want to. Um, the card design, you can see that the art is really nicely done. You have uh, the name of the artist as well. Uh, most of the games usually they only have uh, a few artists and their, their name in the rule books but here you can see that each of the art design will have a name of the artist. Um, the symbols, they have symbols to tell you what the card does but at the same time you also have words below just to reinforce uh, in case you don't understand what the symbol does. But after, after a few plays, you will definitely be able to understand the symbols. It's quite uh, straightforward and intuitive. Um, you can see that there are um, that all these each player will start out with this uh, board. They'll start out with two points, as well as uh, one of each of the colors of these uh, pedestals, and uh, four dollars. And this will be the player order. This will this will determine what is their player order. Now, if you are the first player, you start with one point, but for other, all other players, you start with two points. Um, and so, there's also a very handy. Uh, player 8 which will tell you all the engine scoring that you should pay attention to. Now the, at the start of the game, you randomly choose 5 uh, five gods out of a set of 8 to choose from. So you choose 5, shuffle them and you form a market. Now the way you form a market is depending on the number of players you have. So it's the uh, number of players you have multiplied by 3 plus 1. So for a 4 player game, you will have 13 cards in the market for you to choose from. So the game runs over five rounds. You can, so this is the round marker. Runs over five rounds, and uh, at the end of five rounds, you count points. Whoever has the most points will win the game. So how do you play the game? Now, um, the each round will have uh, four different phases. The first phase is just to set up, uh, just to make sure that uh, the number of cards that you have here are the same. Any cards that's left over that's not been bought or left over from the previous. Uh, e epochs or eras, all right, you will discard them and then you draw new sets of cards for that kind of, uh, that particular, this, this current round. Then after you go to the action phase. Now action phase is where most of the actions 
or most of the activity for the game will happen. In player order, players will need choose a card, all right, choose a card from this market or choose a quest. All right, after they've done that, they need to take one of these columns away from the board. All right, and then that's their turn. So what does all this happen or, or, or what does this do? So if you see each card, they'll have a little symbol at the top right hand corner. Now this would mean that if you want to take this post posthumous hero, for example, you must have the red, uh, red pedestal or red token on your board. Then you can take this card. After you take a card, you can take away any of this uh, tokens. You can even take away the red one. You can even take away the yellow one, which may not have been on the card they have taken. But it just means that, for example, now, when it comes back to me again, when I take one of these cards or, or a quest, I can only take anything that corresponds to a red, blue, or green. For example, if I want to take this card next, this tells me that I need to have both a yellow and a green. But since I've taken away a yellow, it will mean that I cannot take this card anymore. You, players can also take quests, which are uh, these, these nice take study tiles here. Now the quests are important because in subsequent phases of this particular round, it will determine their player order, which will also determine a new player order in the next era or next epoch. It will also determine how much money they get and how much uh, transfers that they can do, and as well as victory points, any potential victory points. So you can see on top of each of these quests, there's a color. So it will indicate, for example, like if I want to get the number one, it will mean that I need to have a red token uh, on my player board to be able to take this number one. So players keep doing this until uh, they have taken four cards. Now there will come a time where uh, players will not be able to take cards because they may have uh, dis take, uh, dismissed the, the wrong color token and they found themselves in a situation where they cannot take any of the cards anymore. So what happens then? Only if you have already taken a quest and if you can't take any of these cards anymore, then you'll take one of this, uh, one of the cards from the drop out and put it into uh, your domain. This will become a citizen. Citizens are, act as a kind of wild card when you are trying to write, when you're trying to create sets or in the, in the game term, write legends, right? But they also cost you two victory points if you use them uh, when the game ends. So all the cards that you have taken, you always put in a domain. Domain is on the top part of your uh, player board. And afterwards, when you uh, when you want to transfer the, from the domain into your Elysium, or when you write about the legends, they will be, they will form sets in your Elysium, which is the bottom part of your board. Take note that players are not allowed to have the same card or same uh, same illustration, same card with the same illustration in their domain at any time. However, in their Elysium, they can have as uh, they could have duplicates if they wanted to. So some of the cards also have abilities. For example, um, in this case, if you take this card, there's this circle icon here. It means that you need to take one of these uh, tokens and put it there and put it into your domain. This means that once for an entire game, you can use this ability. When you use this ability, you take away this, this, uh, this, which means that you can no longer use this ability anymore. This, uh, this Severus cards, this little, this icon means that in your, if it's in your domain, you can tap it and use this ability once per, once per round. Now, if it goes transferred back into your Elysium, that means you have decided to put it into your bottom part of the player board. You can no longer use the abilities. This means that it's a permanent, a permanent effect. That means this card is always active if it's in your domain. This symbol means that only if you have another card of this particular symbol all right, in your domain, you can then use, you can then tap to activate this, this card. And uh, there are a few other cards that are available for some of this. It's an instant, so when you get this card into your domain, you immediately get this, uh, this benefit. Um, this means that this card will only activate when you go to phase 3 of a round. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> the last symbol, this symbol Sorry. Okay, so this symbol means that when the game ends, if this card is in your legend, it means in the in the in the sets that you have collected, then you will trigger the scoring and get points. So most of these symbols are just to give you points. And that's all the symbols there are on the cards. So after you have after all players have done, 
and uh, if you manage to get a quest and three cards, right, we'll go to the, the phase three of this round. Now, one of the players could potentially not have got to be able to get any of this quest. In that case, he'll pass. When all players have done, he'll take the remaining one that's not yet taken, flip over, and and take this card, uh, this quest for himself. Now you can see that the benefits are much worse. All right, for someone uh, for number one, all uh, all the other quests have the same uh, benefit. This uh, one lira and one gold coin behind. Uh, but if you manage to get the quest when it's still not yet flipped, then you get a better benefit. Oh, I just realized that the quests form a very nice picture. Let me put them out like this. Okay, so after you've done all this, we go to the phase three. Now, phase three, first thing you do is you check uh, to reshuffle the player order. So whoever had taken the first quest will now be a first player. Uh, whoever takes a second will be second, third, third, fourth, fourth, fourth. All right. This is important because now when uh, in this phase is where people start to write legends. That means you transfer cards from their uh, domain into their Elysium. And this could also, it's important because you potentially could get some of these benefits. And if you're the first to get it, some of these benefits, you're first to get it, then you're able to keep it. Okay, so how does this, this phase work? Now, after you've, you've get in the, uh, gotten the benefit, the first player, now the new first player, will be able to do uh, one transfer. All right. One transfer means that they, they can transfer one card from their domain into their Elysium. When you transfer, you need to pay a cost. So the cost is dependent on this number here. All right. So for example, for this card, if I transfer it into my Elysium, let me see if I write a legend about it. All right. I'll need to pay $3. That's where the goal comes in for this game. $3. Now, when I put it in my Elysium, I can either create a new legend or add it to an existing legend. Now, when you create a new legend, you just put, put it by itself. When you add to an existing legend, there are two types of legend you're trying to form. One is if you have all of the same family, which is here. Now, if you form all of the same, fam same family, that means you must have one set of three cards, which has numbers one, two, and three. That's how you form one set of the same family. At the end of the game, for if you have two cards in a, in a set, you get three points. If you have three cards in this set, you get six points. Anything that is in your Elysium that has only one card in the legend, when the game ends, you will discard it. So uh, you must have at least two cards to build score points. The other way why you can form a legend is if you form uh, a legend of the same numbers. So that means five, there's five different colors in the, in the game, during the game. If you form a set of five of that particular number, you get 12 points. That means if I have five trees, there are different, number, different color trees, all right, I'll get 12 points. Then 4 will give you 8 points, 3 will give you 4 points, 2 will give you 2 points. So that's how you form sets. Once you form a set, you can never change the set. That means you cannot swap cards around in the set. In addition to the points you get there, you also get in-game points. So if you're first to complete uh, the set, uh, a family set for this uh, particular god, you get this token, 5 points. All right. The second person to complete it, including yourself, so you can complete two sets of the same god, you get the second one, which is two points. So this is the same for all, if you complete the family sets. Now for the number sets, it's a bit like Settlers of Catan, the longest road. So if I have two number trees in my set, I can get this for nine points. If someone else has three number trees, then they'll take this from me, and they'll, now they'll have this nine points. So and so on and so forth. So once a person has gotten five number, number trees, they'll take this and keep it with them, because you can never get more than five, you can only get six. All right. So once that is done, you go into round uh, phase four of the of a round, which means that uh, you you untap anything that you have tapped in your domain, you move back everything, all the all the all the tokens, and then uh, you are ready to begin a new round. So this continues at the end of round five, and then you you count points. So the points again, it is how many points you may have collected during a game. Check your sets. How many how, what points you get. If you're playing with uh, Aries, all right, you get uh, you get a certain number of uh, you get a certain number of um, points depending on how many of this prestige point tokens you have gotten or PP they call it. Uh, this is for this this is to remind you that you get end game scoring depending on the on the cards that have these symbols on them. And finally, if you have any citizens that you use in your sets, you must minus two points for you them. So whoever has the most points will then win the game. 
So that's the gist of uh, Elysium. So let's go to my final thoughts. Elysium. Now, uh, I really, really liked Elysium. When I first saw it at the New York Toy Fair, when I interviewed Esmode, uh, they showed me the components, they showed me the art, and gave me a brief uh, introduction of the gameplay, and I really liked it a lot. Um, there's a lot of replayability. Uh, there's eight different gods that you can choose choose five from for each game. So uh, there's a lot of replayability. The gods are all very feels very different. The cards are feels very different. For example, for Poseidon, Poseidon is the the cards from Poseidon are always attacking other players. You are making them losing their money, losing their uh, points, or losing other things. Uh, Ares gives you another element to fight over, that which is the prestige points that you can fight over, and uh, another god also gives you a uh, the Oracle, which allows you to have four different cards on top that will let you see what's, what cards are upcoming in the market. You can also get cards from the Oracle, depending on what uh, cards you have selected when you buy from the market. There's a lot of uh, interaction among players, um, mainly because of the Poseidon cards, but also because of what you're trying to get, what legends you're trying to write. For example, you're, you're fighting for the, the tokens that will give you points depending because of the numbers. Uh, number legends you're writing that will be quite hotly contested over even these family uh, bonus points that you get you also be fighting them fighting over them to see who can get that, get it first and uh, you can sneak you can sneak in to get it from them if you have the right player order um, building a, building the engine is very fun there's a lot of different uh, combo combos that you can get from the different gods and the different cards that you have so for example you can have a card that gives you uh, citizens that give you points when you get in citizens and then you have another card that gets you citizens and then you have another card that can activate uh, this card again to get you citizens again and again so a lot of different combinations that you can discover for yourself the the main beauty of the game is the, the column selection so every time when you select a card or a quest you need to decide which column uh, you want to take away you want to uh, disable from your player board and that is the the it could also be the AP part uh, analysis paralysis part of the game because you'll be thinking okay if should I take away the green one because uh, I don't need any more or should I leave it open because I, I need to I need to uh, leave it leave the option open so that I can get this other card in case someone else takes this other card for me and it always feels as if you always make the wrong choice when you've taken a token away and nearer to the end of the round you realize oh no I don't have the right tokens I need to take a citizen or I need to take a quest uh, that's flipped on the other side so that to me is a very juicy part of the game um, so yeah so I can I, I, I will heartily recommend Elysium so if you like uh, light to medium weight uh, Euro style games deck building and uh, set collecting, all right, then Elysium is the game for you. So I definitely recommend uh, Elysium. Thank you very much for watching.